Hello, this is Josh Smith. Um, I'm going to do a tutorial on tone mapping today. Uh, I'd like to think of tone mapping as a way to process your data by removing the stars and bringing out the most of a grayscale image that you can. Generally, I will do tone mapping on narrowband data or luminance data. Um, you can do it as well on RGB data, although usually I don't do that quite as often. Uh, typically, you're trying to bring out as much of the crisp detail and dust and contrast as you can without having to worry about blowing out stars or having the stars take over your image. So today, I'm going to process my Pelican Nebula data uh, this is seven half-hour exposures with a five nanometer hydrogen alpha astrodon filter taken with my QSI 683. So with no further ado, I will take you through my tone mapping tutorial. So to go through this tutorial, what I'm going to do is reference my processed image and I will process a new image alongside of it, um, but I will show you the steps as I go along. Of note here, um, one thing that I particularly like to do, especially when tone mapping, is work um, through the entire Photoshop document uh, without actually merging layers uh, pretty much at any point. I like to keep folders uh, that give me all the details of what I'm doing. And at that, that way, if I make any mistakes or I want to tweak things later on or I just want to see what I did, it's easy to go back throughout the process and see what I did. Um, you'll notice down here in the lower right-hand corner, I have my last layer, which was uh, cropping, and I think I did a final couple little star adjustments. Um, did one final stretch near the end. I did an unsharp mask, some noise reduction, uh, a little contrast, star control, <clears throat> dynamic en enhance, a little more sharpening, some curve stretching, removing stars, and my initial stretch. So as you can see, as I work my way up through these folders, I can see everything I did here. <clears throat> so we're going to start at the very beginning. And we will start with unstretched data. And as you can see, there's, well, there's not much to see. A very dark screen. Um, some of the brightest stars are coming through. And the first thing I'm going to do is an initial stretch. I try to do a handful of levels adjustments. I won't go into too much detail about those. Um, you can see those in another tutorial at some other time. So what I'm going to do is some initial stretching here with my levels adjustments. And the first few stretches are going to be fairly aggressive. Bring out as much uh, dust as I can without blowing out the stars too much in the beginning. And once I can sort of see where my image is, I'm going to rotate this to get it in the orientation I want. And I'm going to do a quick crop now that I can see where the edges of the image are. And then I am going to convert this to an RGB image. Uh, I just like to work with RGB color. Um, no particular reason other than some of the actions that I have will only work in RGB and it just makes uh, using those actions a little bit easier. The other thing that I want to do is <clears throat> monitor my histogram and also I'd like to monitor kind of what my background looks like and some of my brighter stars as I'm working through the image. So I'll go, go over to the color sampler tool 
and I'll grab a couple a couple spots like a little star right here and try and make sure I get it right in the center of the star so I have some idea what I'm getting. I don't want to be blowing that out. At 221 it's fairly high already but not blown out and then I'll take a dark portion of the sky. I like to work uh, with my black point at about 40 so keep an eye on that throughout the processing and I'll do just a little bit more stretching. You just want to widen that histogram just a little bit more get my black point up to 40. Okay, that's a good start. And uh, for thoroughness sake, I'm trying to label every one of my uh, levels, or one of my layers here. And do that. and just click on the layer and I'm going to label it levels and cropping okay so now that we have <clears throat> our initial stretch we're going to remove the stars from the image. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to do it fairly early on before the stars get really out of control. There's a couple bright ones up here uh, by the eye of the pelican and one down on the body, but not too many really bright ones. So the first thing I'm going to do is some actions to actually reduce the star size. Um, I currently use Annie's Astro Actions and I use um, the Astronomy Tools. <clears throat> so the actions that I really like to use when removing the stars uh, first is a reduced star bloating from Annie's Astro Actions and typically I'll run that a couple of times and try and make sure I'm getting the biggest stars without much of the nebula. And just try to get rid of a little bit of the bloating that's occurring in there. So I'll run that twice. And if I come in here and show you, stars all get tamed quite a bit. Um, they get a little bit smaller and quite a bit less bright. The other thing that I like to be careful about when I'm running that action, though, is that occasionally you'll lose a little bit of the details in your nebula. Um, this one didn't seem too bad, but you lost a little bit of detail. Um, so just try and keep an eye on that. If you're going to lose much detail, um, I'll show you in the next uh, layer what you can do about that. So I'm going to bring in one more layer here. Uh, actually, before I do another layer, now I'm going to work on reducing the star size. <clears throat> so I'll use the action from that. Um, and usually, and usually I'll run that a handful of times. Um, I really want to get these stars as small and manageable as I can before I actually try and remove them. Um, you can see they're getting just a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. I might run this, I don't know, three to five times depending on uh, how bright the stars are with the initial exposures. <clears throat> and so maybe I'll run it one more time here. At some point, it just really stops doing anything. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, you want to keep an eye on the detail in your nebula, and it's a little bit hard to tell, but kind of right down here in the star forming region, I'm losing just a little bit of the crispness, um, I guess of a really particular area that I want to keep in this data. Uh, if I zoom in, you know, it's not too bad in most of the other region, but sometimes there's some really tiny... Uh, uh, small structure stuff that you want to keep so I might mask a little bit of that off so if 
I'm going to do that. I will add a mask and just come in here and kind of mask off the stuff I care about definitely keeping in here. And hopefully, as you can see, if I disable this, and then I enable it, it just helps reserve just a little bit more of the detail. <clears throat> so now the stars look a lot more manageable. They um, are, are still there, but they're not nearly as bright and blown out as they were before. So now I'm actually going to get into the star removal itself. So I'm going to make one more layer. I'm actually just going to copy the layer that I had previously because I want to retain that mask uh, that will help uh, keep this data nice and crisp here in the region of interest. So to remove the stars, make sure you're selected on your image. I'm going to run a dust and scratches filter. So you go to filter, noise, and dust and scratches. Um, typically, uh, if you can reduce the stars a lot in the beginning, it's very helpful to um, be able to run a smaller radius dust and scratches filter and also a lower threshold to help you remove the stars. Um, if the stars are too bright, and too big, sometimes you have to run a little higher radius and you start losing more and more of your data pretty quickly. So you want to run this eh, probably around five or six, maybe seven pixels. The uh, goal is to get most of the stars to disappear. Um, however, I'll zoom out a little bit so I can show you what happens uh, on the large scale. You can see there's still going to be some of those bright, larger stars in there. Um, you don't want you don't want too many of them, but you also don't want uh, none of them because if you have none of them, it means you're going to start really uh, damaging a lot of your interior data. So I'm going to bring this radius back down a little bit. It's probably to five pixels. Um, I'm going to keep that threshold up around two for now. Um, and the threshold typically deals with how bright of an object is being removed uh, from the image with the dust and scratches filter. As you can see, if I raise the threshold levels up, then it's not going to touch a lot of the brighter objects. So as I lower it, it'll go after more of them. Um, it's kind of a nice balancing act. You have to play around with it some uh, where you, to keep from really destroying too much of your data. So we'll probably do this at about two. And I'll zoom in here and show you. And most of the stars are gone. A little bit of details lost, but not too bad. As you can see, really retain most of the data. In this region, there's some dark nebula and that actually went away with the dust and scratches filter. So, so that, that's some of the stuff that you're going to want to make sure that uh, you deal with after you remove the stars. <clears throat> and we'll show you how to do that afterwards. So right now, this is what the image looks like. There's some residual stars, but not too many. Um, and really, it's up to you how much time you want to take getting rid of these stars uh, to make sure that your image comes out looking the way you want it to look. So to start going in and actually getting rid of uh, some of these bigger stars, we're going to go over here to our spot healing brush. And this is the tedious part where you want to keep your spot healing brush just a little bit larger than the star. If you try and go smaller than a star, you're going to make a hole in an image like that. And that's not a very good look. It's not what you're trying to do with this, so I'm going to undo that and try to raise and lower the size of the spot healing brush just a little bit larger than the star itself. 
And see, that was even not quite big enough. So I'm going to go one more size bigger. And there you can see it was kind of a nice clean heel. Um, didn't lose too much of the data in there. Didn't create any new data. Uh, just got rid of the star. So I'll zoom in here on another star here. And come down just a little bit larger than the star. And it continues that nice dust lane there. Uh, without actually damaging that. So you can see I probably have uh, maybe 40 or 50 stars throughout the image that I want to take care of. Um, pay particular attention down here to this area. And as you can see, I have that actually uh, masked off. So that's something that I'll come in and pay special attention to after I get rid of the stars and the rest of the image. So. I'm not going to make you sit here and wait through going uh, through all these stars, but I will pause it and go back and heal all these stars. Okay, <clears throat> I think I did a pretty good job of getting rid of pretty much most of the stars in here. Uh, there's a few remnants here and there, um, which we'll probably clean up later on in the image, but. Uh, was able to heal out pretty much the majority of the stars here. And you can see there's still some good data here for the star forming region, although it's not as crisp as you'd like and a lot of the dark regions were lost. So next we're going to show you how to deal with the uh, dark regions and getting them back. <clears throat> so at this point the stars are gone and the image looks pretty good overall from far back. As you zoom in though, there's not a ton of dynamic range in here and kind of a lot of the details and crispness of the image are lost uh, due to sort of the dark regions disappearing through the uh, dust and scratches filter. So what I'm going to do is come back here before my um, before my uh, star removal techniques and I'm gonna copy the layer um, and as you can see in here there's nice dark kind of crisp data so I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna come back in up here and I'm gonna paste that up on top again uh, as a normal layer and so it looks like well you just put your stars right back on top of uh, the picture that you removed them from. And well you did, but you don't have to worry about that because what we're going to do is use a darken layer. So I'm going to pull this guy back over here and then we're going to use this layer as darken. And as you can see what it does is bring back in some of that dark detail in the nebula. <clears throat> Over here in the eye, it kind of brings back a lot more contrast. It recovers a lot of that nebula you lost. And over here by the star forming region, they bring back a lot more uh, dark detail. And even if you zoom out, you can see just kind of a a nice, not even a subtle change, really almost kind of like a nice sharpening from afar because you're bringing back in these dark areas. So that's how to deal with getting rid of the stars and bringing back in the dark data. So as I mentioned earlier, I like to try and work in folders and keep all of my layers uh, accessible. Um, so I'm going to create a new folder um, and in that group I'm going to put in all of the uh, layers that I actually use to remove my stars. So I will label that removing stars and I'll make sure to label this the darkened layer And this is the starless layer, the first one. Okay, so I'm going to close that group out. So, <clears throat> at this
this point, I want to make a copy of this image to work on top of a new layer. And I don't want to be using a pass-through or a darken for the layer blending mode. So I'm going to select all, do an edit, copy merged. And then I'm going to paste this right on top. So what that does is just take a picture of your picture where it's at and creates a new layer that you can do whatever you want with. So I will probably spend this layer doing some curves. Um, <clears throat> there's been a little bit of kind of washing out of the image at this point, and um, you know, I also should be able to bring out kind of a little more of the uh, little more of the image. So we'll do a curves adjustment, and I'm going to work on both kind of the dimmer dust as well as the brighter dust. So I'm going to do a couple kind of selective curves. Um, one where I'm going to focus on that dimmer dust and then one where I'm going to come in here and do some of this brighter dust and bring that up and bring out some more of the contrast in the star forming region. And I don't want the background getting too dark and bringing out a bunch of noise, so I'm going to do probably one or two more curves. And I'll select in this region. And this will just help bring out some of the sort of dimmest dust. It got a little bit noisy, but it really uh, brought out a lot of what I'm looking for here. And you can see this really came to life in this uh, in this layer right here with a handful of curves and. The stars are really well under control. There's a few remnants in here. Um, and sometimes I might go along kind of as I'm working through the image and take care of those few stars that are popping up here and there um, while I'm processing so they don't get any further out of control. And again, I'll just use that spot healing brush. And I like to be careful to make sure that I'm not doing anything to actually damage my picture while I'm using that spot healing brush so I don't want to go in the middle of some really crisp detailed area like this and use it but um, yeah, we can get rid of a couple more of these little guys in here and there's just a little bit up in the corner that I could take care of um, I'm gonna pause the video take care of a couple of these stars as I go along and I'll be right back okay so the image is cleaned up a little bit more here. I'm going to call this my uh, curve stretching layer. And again, I'm going to make a new layer by coming in here, copying, selecting all, copy merged, and pasting a new picture. And what I'm going to do now is actually do some sharpening. So I'm going to lay two pictures on top here. Um, I like to use the two layer high pass filter sharpening technique. Um, so I'm going to use a high pass on both of these. And I like to keep this for the first one probably down around the five, six pixel mark um, to bring out some of the kind of uh, smaller scale details and lay that on both of them. And I'm going to change the first one to an overlay and the second one to a soft light. And you can see right away those are really, uh, really impactful on what the image does. First one gives it a little bit of, or maybe even a lot of sharpening, and then the second one gives it even more. I don't want either of those to go quite so far because it just gets super noisy in a hurry. Um, so the first layer, I'll probably do an opacity of maybe around, uh, we'll go down to around 40, 50%. I like to keep it in that range, maybe a little bit higher because I'll put these into a group and actually change the opacity of that group itself. So this seems about like a good spot, about 50, 50, 60, somewhere in there for these two, I guess, really. And then, as before, make sure I'm labeling everything. So I'll call this my overlay high pass. And 
And I'll call this my soft light high pass. Okay, and I'll make a new group for them. Put them into that group and call this my high pass small scale. And I'm going to change the opacity of this group just a little bit. Kind of bring it down to the point where I'm getting some sharpening on the small scale, but not adding too much noise. And you can see it makes a pretty good difference. Brings out a lot more of the detail. And you zoom out, and you can see the same thing. Kind of just crisps the picture up. So I'm going to go through and actually do that on a larger scale also. So select all, edit, copy, merged, and lay two more of these layers on here. And once again, I'm going to do a high pass filter. And this time, we're going to go up to kind of the larger scale. And if you zoom out, you can see instead of getting the real small scale structures, I want to get kind of more of the uh, bigger details. So I'll go out to maybe, uh, we'll go out to about 29, 30. 30 seems about right. Um, if you can see in here, it brings out the structure of the pelican itself instead of sort of the star forming region. So I'm going to stick with that for both of these. Okay, and same thing. I'm going to do soft light for the first one. Oh, sorry. Overlay for the first one. And some people like to use screen, some people like to use soft light or overlay uh, for that first one. Usually I like to use overlay and then soft light for the second one. You can see, yeah, very dramatic right away. Same thing, I'll drop this down to around kind of 50, 55, 60 for the opacity. Somewhere in there. And I'll make some labels for these. And I'll put them into a new group. And we'll call it large scale high pass. And probably bring down that opacity to around 50%. And again, see some of the larger scale crispness coming into this image now. So the first one brings a little bit of the small scale stuff. It's harder to see from further back, but if you zoom in, you get a little bit of that small scale detail in there. And then if you're zoomed way in, you might not see the large scale quite as much. If you zoom out, you'll see the large scale pop right in there for you. So a lot more detail brought back in. At this point, <clears throat> Usually I'll do maybe a very subtle unsharp mask um, in combination with some noise reduction. So we'll take a look at what we want to do with those. So once again, I'll make a new layer. And I think I'm going to try and get just a little bit more out of this data, not too much more. Um, sometimes to do that, I might do a couple of these actions for me, and these actions that seem like they work pretty well usually for me. One might be enhanced dust lanes, uh, one might be dynamic enhanced, and one. Uh, usually the enhanced dust lanes I kind of like to do on my own, but I'll try it always and see if I can. Uh, see something that is going to improve the image that I didn't think I could do on my own. So uh, I will come in here and run in enhanced dust lanes. And we'll just see what happens with it. <clears throat> There's always the option like with any action or filter or anything like that to run it at a much lower opacity and this one really brings the noise out um, if you use it especially later on 
um, after you've done some more work, but you can see it really does add some more pop. Um, so I'm going to retain it, but I'm going to bring that opacity way down so that the noise isn't being uh, increased way too much. And it gives it a little bit more pop, but uh, doesn't bring no uh, the noise quite up as much. So I'm going to call that Enhanced Dust Lanes Layer. And I like her actions because typically they're a little more subtle uh, maybe than some other actions sometimes and it just keeps them under a little more control. So I might do a dynamic enhance layer as well. Um, you can see that really brightens it up and that's kind of a combination of a screen and soft layer to bring out some more of the uh, detail. The screen layer is really going to brighten it and it's more than I want to brighten it up. Um, I try and keep that black point still around 40. It looks pretty good here. Um, so that brought out just a little more detail and a little more noise, unfortunately. But um, so I'm going to label this dynamic enhance layer. And I'm going to bring all three or all of these actions sorted together in one group uh, up at the top here. And really just to make sure I'm keeping these kind of as small step incremental um, additions to the processing. I call these my actions um, for enhancement. And I'll keep that opacity down pretty low too. I want to get some of what it brought out, but I don't want to bring the noise way, way too much higher. So you can see it. Clicking on and off brings out a little bit more. I bring that opacity up just a little bit here, maybe around the 45% range. It's about like where I like to keep it. So the image is looking pretty good. Stars are still in check. I don't see any stars reappearing too, too much here. Um, and now we're going to deal with a little bit of noise removal. Um, do that. Make a another layer. And we're actually going to do probably two of these, but the first one, we're going to run a Photoshop filter, um, Noise Ninja. And almost always, I like to run Noise Ninja with a inverted mask, because um, it just destroys the details, as you can see in here, if you're going for real small scale structures. So I might play around with the filter a little bit, um, the strength and the uh, unsharp mask amount. Um, but usually I keep it pretty close to where it's at, let it run its course. And you can see that really it does take care of a lot of noise pretty well, but it also takes a lot of that detail out. So typically I will take this um, and I'll put in a layer mask so I will copy the actual image itself and come in here and put in a layer mask um, and then I will actually invert that layer mask so that I am retaining um, retaining a lot of that detail and then typically I'll even come into this layer mask and you can see what I'll do here um, you can see it happen live as I'll run an adjustments layer on the layer mask itself, or adjustment levels, sorry. And uh, it's inverted from what you normally would expect to see with the uh, levels up against the right hand side. So I'll bring what is actually the white point down into the histogram to make the background very bright white. So I'm hitting all that noise. And I will bring the black point slider over to the left some. And that'll bring that midpoint up quite a bit more, which is going to darken sort of the interior nebula. Um, if I take the preview on and off, you can see how kind of that detail just pops in and out of existence. But if I zoom out kind of into the darker region, where it's really uh, kind of noisy, you can see that that should help somewhat there too. Um, seems like it's not quite helping as much as I would like to, so I might go 
and bring this waypoint slider just a little more even, which should help out and bring the midpoint slider down just a little bit. And so if we come in here and look at the actual layer mask itself, you can see, yep, it's white all over in the real dark regions and then pretty dark here um, in the brighter regions of the nebula. So it's a looked like a pretty good noise reduction mask. Um, it was subtle. Um, didn't take away too much of the detail, but took, uh, took care of a lot of this kind of really spotty noise, um, which is what we we're looking to do. So zoom back out here and call this my uh, noise reduction mask. And you can also play sort of with the opacity on these Usually I never run them all the way at 100% because I like to run a couple couple iterations of them um, and running them at 100% on every one of them is definitely going to cause blotchiness, that orange peel effect. Um, but I kind of chip away at it a little bit at a time. So another one that I might run, um, coming in here and making a new layer, is a uh, despeckle layer and that has sort of a similar effect to get rid of a lot of that really fine uh, grain noise and it removes it pretty thoroughly a lot of the time it, it also blurs your detail out just a little bit as most layer uh, noise reduction layers do so I'll call this the despeckle layer and cut that opacity down just a little bit too um, I'll keep that at about 70%. We'll actually bump the other last one back up to 70% because, again, I'm going to group these, um, get them about where I like them, and then back them off just a little bit. And then I'm going to run one final um, overall uh, noise reduction. And I'll just do another Noise Ninja on that. And this one, I will run over the entire image. But I'll bump the opacity way down on that one. That one kind of helps hit the nebula just a little bit more. Um, get rid of a little bit of the noise in the depth, in the uh, brighter spots of the nebula. So like with the other stuff. I'm put those guys into a group. I'm going to call it my noise reduction group. And I'll zoom in to see what the opacity does here. Playing with it. I want to keep most of the details and just get rid of a lot of that kind of fine noise. Um, it's just a balancing act, whatever your personal preference is. Um, I like. I always say that I like to have a little more, no, uh, little more detail and a little more noise, and then I end up wiping out more noise and more detail than I like to most of the time. And so we'll run this opacity maybe at about 50%. It seems to be giving us a good bit of the detail still. Um, it's still pretty nice and crisp. Maybe I'll bump that down to maybe 30%. And got rid of some of this finer noise. I keep my eye up here too and make sure that smoothing smoothing a lot of that out. And it looks pretty good now, right about there. So that's what I like to do to get rid of the noise near the end of the processing run. Okay, so now that I've done some noise reduction, um, Actually, we'll go in and do one final sharpening. Um, it, for whatever reason, it doesn't really seem to make sense to me, but it still seems to um, still seems to work for me to so run my noise reduction and then one kind of final subtle sharpening. And as you can see, I don't want to do this much. Um, although, typically at the end, what I'll do is combination of sharpening and contrast um, and then just put them into a group with a pretty low opacity so this 100% uh, it's 
about right. I might even bump that up just a tiny bit, like 130%, come down to a radius of, uh, we'll put it around like five or six pixels. Threshold will keep down almost all the way at zero. Um, it's gonna end up being a subtle effect when we're done with it, so don't worry too much what the image looks like here. And we'll call this my unsharp mask. And we'll do one more layer. And here we're going to go in and do a brightness contrast. We're going to bump up the contrast a good bit. Probably go up to about 30 on the contrast. And my, does that look ugly. It went from a beautiful pelican to something you wouldn't want to see. Just fine, because what we're going to do is make another group. We're going to bump these two guys up into that group. And we'll do final enhancement for the label of this. And what we'll actually do is add a mask to this group. And to add that mask, I'm going to come in to the final noise reduction image. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to come back up to my mask here and I'm going to put that image into the mask and that's going to help actually bump up the contrast just in the nebula region without bringing out way too much more noise up here in the dark region. Um, and obviously I'm not going to run that. It says a full opacity. If you can see a full opacity gets uh, almost pretty extreme with that contrast. So I'll run that opacity down quite a bit lower, but you can see there's just one little kind of final sharpening, but uh, the final sharpening doesn't really do too much to add noise to it. And it just uh, brings out a little bit more of the detail, a little more brightness in the nebula, and kind of the dark spots, um, and just kind of a nice final finishing touch on bringing out the detail. And we're going to come in here and paste one more layer on here. And we're going to set our black point. Um, usually I bring that black point down just a little bit lower for the final setting. As you can see this histogram is really stretched out. And then we still have our region up there with about a 30 on the black point. Um, that's what about where I like to end it. Anywhere between 25 and 35 is usually where I like to end it. You don't want to come way up here and actually clip your black points. And I like to leave it way down here and have the background be too bright. So usually I'll come up and I'll bring it close to the edge of the histogram, right around 30, 35. That's a place that I'm usually pretty happy with. I'm, I just do a subtle setting at the very end, try not to introduce any more noise. It seems like a good place right there. So I'll call this my final levels adjustment. And I might do a little bit more uh, cleaning up of some of the stars that are remaining up here. And I will do that. I'll pause the video and I'll come right back to it. <clears throat> so there we have it. Um, that was my tutorial on tone mapping. Uh, I'd like to thank you for making it all the way through to this point of the tutorial if you have. And... Um, enjoy the image and hopefully this helps you out a little bit on your technique um, it's helped me out a lot and I've gotten to the point now where I have a pretty good routine that I go through every time I do this it seems pretty reliable and it takes a little extra effort but it sure is worth it to finish up with an image like this and just see all the great contrast and details and depth of the image um, it's just a uh, 
pleasure to use the technique. And once again, thank you to Jerry Lodigris, Scott Rosen, Hannah Morris, J.P. Mestizo, and uh, Bill Snyder, among many others, for helping out with developing these techniques and uh, letting me figure out how to do tone mapping so well. If you have any comments, questions, uh, critiques, I'd love to hear them. Love to hear any ways that you uh, could suggest to uh, do a better job on this and bring out more details and keep the images cleaner. Clear skies. Thanks.